Good morning. Can I start, Karen, by asking you some questions about the Yellowhammer report? I appreciate that maybe things that you, you still aren't able to tell us, but I'm trying to get clear what the actual nature of the document was, because the Times certainly gave the impression that they had received a document, either in paper or electronic form, that had a date on it and that was current as of that day. Government sources, or some of them, have tried to suggest that it was something much more vague, that it was a collection of pieces of information back and forward that never actually stopped and it was you know, a, a kind of work in progress. And Michael Gove certainly tried to imply that it was already at the date of the time the Times got it. Are you able to tell us anything of what you know as to the currency of the information in Yellowhammer at the time that the Times got it in early August? I'm, I'm not sure if there's much uh, light I can shed on that. Um, I, I wasn't familiar with all of the Yellow Hammer plans. Um, I, I was responsible for two of them that related to disruption at the border for goods and for people. Um, and uh, every um, plan uh, got written down. In, in some way, but I'm not sure how that got collated into any single document and what date that document was. Um, from my reading of the newspaper and what I read in the newspaper about the report uh, for, the, for, the, for the sections that I read, they looked, um, they looked completely like the documents that I would have seen before. Um, so they looked entirely valid at the point in time, um, but but I, I, I can't comment on the actual document because I don't know what it was. Right. Were you still working on that document pretty much until the time you left the service in July this year? Was it something that had been done months and months ago? And oh yeah, time? no, it was it was constantly being refreshed and updated. Um, uh, the obviously some things got sort of landed and then you didn't particularly update them because they were still current. But I know our um, border assumptions on goods going through the border was a fundamentally important one for all of the um, yellow hammer plans and therefore we were, we were constantly updating it. If anything significant had happened that would have either changed the underlying assumptions or changed your assessment as to the impact, Presumably, it would have been incumbent on you to update. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Okay, thank you. You, you gave um, a very helpful explanation as to what the kind of phrase a reasonable worst case scenario uh, would mean. I think you said it was something that was possible, but at the less likely end of the scale of probabilities. Are there standard criteria that the civil service would use in deciding at what point in the spectrum you draw the line and say is that as a reasonable worst case scenario anything worse than that is probably not going to happen? Um, uh, we struggled a lot with this, <laughs> uh, found it very difficult um, to, uh, to do something that was formulaic that, that couldn't be um, uh, challenged. Um, the only way that we could do it was by um, a cross-government, a group of cross-government um, uh, director generals um, agreeing that they do seem likely. And each of the sub-assumptions underneath each of the assumptions was normally owned by a particular department and then they would provide as much evidence as they could of that and um, uh, provide evidence uh, associated with why they think that assumption is likely or less likely. Uh, some of them were very difficult to provide evidence for and, and some actually you could. So, 